deep in the reeds? Yes, indeed. Here is me. I am him. I am reviewing another book. Uh, this one being The Godfather by Mario Puzo. You've probably heard of it, but not as the book, as the movie. But anyway, let's get into it. Mario Puzo was a screenwriter, a journalist, and obviously a novelist who wrote a lot of literary fiction. Um, he put out four novels before this one, and his work didn't really sell that well. He literally wrote this book because he wanted a way out of debt, so he took his craft and he said, I'm going to make something with a lot of mainstream appeal and see how I do with it. And uh, since writing it, Mario Puzo went from sort of literary fiction to writing exclusively sort of like these somewhat pulpy uh, mafia novels, um, and that became sort of his bread and butter, really. So with The, Gre with the Godfather, the plot centers around the Corleone family, uh, who they are one of five major crime families that control New York through drug trafficking, illegal tobacco, uh, gambling, prostitution, all that kind of stuff. And um, tensions sort of break out when this shady drug smuggler comes in and he says, I've got like all these drug manufacturing plants in the old country and I can make you basically millions if you sign this deal to me. And he goes to the five families with this drug deal and you know, tensions erupt over who gets the deal and all this like power grab stuff starts happening and that's what the plot is basically. Regarding Puzo's writing style, I would say it's a little spotty. Uh, you can definitely tell that he has a past writing for pulpy men's magazines. But then there's other times where he, f he definitely does come across as quite literary. In the first chapter of the novel, the head of the Corleone crime family, also known as the Godfather, um, visits his dying partner and his dying partner asks that the Godfather save him and like intervene and save him from hell and all this stuff. And the Godfather basically acts like a priest would. He gives him a final benediction and he says like, you know, I'll pray for you and, you know, making the sign of the cross. It's a really interesting way of uh, introducing the reader to the core symbolism of the book, which is the critique of institutional power using the mafia and organized crime as a metaphor. Um, obviously the thing that's, the institution that's criticized the most is the Catholic Church, but you also have criticisms of the American dream, of, you know, government and uh, policing, of um, celebrity lifestyle, all this stuff, and it's all sort of tied back in to the corruption of the mafia. And I think that's a really unique sort of approach to take with a book like this, and it's what elevates it beyond being just another pulpy crime novel. It's also a pretty unique way of leading the reader to question the powerful institutions that are around them and the morally ambiguous things that those institutions do. Um, especially if you're a beneficiary of the inequalities that those institutions create. There's also, of course, the fact that a lot of the characters, well, all of the characters, are extremely bigoted. They are patriarchal as all get out, and they are racist as well. And although you might be tempted to simply dismiss that as, you know, a sign of the times, this book was written in the 60s, um, I think it's a very intentional thing in the book to have the characters be like this, because you know, these are the people that are holding all the keys, they actively prevent women and non-Italians from gaining power in their circles. It's very, obviously, it's very much a parallel of the very real-world institutionalized sexism and racism. Puzo is very deft at weaving these sort of interlocking social themes into the narrative. And while all of these themes are going on, you have this really enga engaging uh, crime narrative. It's, you know, all the stuff you would want from a book like this, all the intrigue, all the character drama, and how, like, a character's motivations will cause things to happen, and how the slightest mistake in this nefarious world can lead to you or people you love getting killed, and I think it's a really, really excellent story at its core. And of course, at the core of the story, uh, the Godfather is not the main character. Um, rather, his son, Michael Corleone, is. And Michael Corleone is like this straight-laced guy, he's gone to college, he's like a decorated war veteran, and he wants to live like a proper life, but he gets drawn in by circumstance. 
I really like Michael's arc in this. Like, I enjoy the movie, of course, but I think the book does a better job at making his character arc seem more natural. It draws a lot more on his past as a soldier, and it brings that into Michael's thinking a lot, like staying cool under pressure and strategizing when the stakes are high, things like that. And when you combine the character writing with the deeper themes that I mentioned earlier, it's pretty clear why The Godfather was able to distinguish itself in a sea of overexposed crime novels and become one of the most famous mafia stories ever written. So with all that in mind, is are there any major problems? Uh, well, yes, I'm glad you asked. There's just one major issue with this book. And that's that nobody gives a fuck about Johnny Fontaine. Puzo spends an inordinate amount of time on this milquetoast Hollywood character, and it's obviously there to be a critique of the celebrity lifestyle of the American dream and of the entertainment industry and its, you know, connections to organized crime. But that connection is made really quickly, you know? Like, within the first two chapters, The Godfather sends a guy to make a deal with a film director, and you see the corruption, you get this very Harvey Weinstein-esque scene where you're like, oh my god, oh my god, like, look at how awful this industry is, and then the reader gets it, but the Puzo keeps going back again and again to this, uh, like, you're in the middle of this really intriguing, like, mafia crime struggle for power thing, and then it's just like, I wonder what old Johnny Fontaine is up to in Hollywood. He's trying to get his mistress an abortion, whoa! And it's just like, okay, can we go back to the good stuff, please? The other thing that I kind of take issue with in uh, The Godfather is that I find Puzo to be a little bit too reliant on ex exposition and over-explaining certain things. Generally, I think there's a few hiccups. I think if he had tightened up the writing and if he had really cut down on the Johnny Fontaine character, uh, he would have had a much better book overall. So, while I admire Puzo's ambition in using a mafia story as a critique of institutional power in the American dream, um, I think the, the execution sometimes falters. Fortunately, the movie, in my opinion, maintains a lot of the social critique while cutting basically all of the fat. It's still one of my favorite movies of all time, too. Um, so if you are completely new to the story, I would personally recommend the film over the book. However, if you're already interested in Mafia stories, I would definitely recommend checking out the book. But if you do read the book, don't feel too bad if you feel compelled to skip the Johnny Fontaine chapters. Whenever I go over this, when I, when I was re-listening to the audiobook for this, every time Johnny Fontaine came up, I just dragged the timeline slider just past his scene so I wouldn't have to deal with it. And the story was much better for it. Like, I would have given this a solid 8 out of 10 if Johnny Fontaine was only in the first couple chapters. I would give The Godfather a strong 6 to a light 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, definitely worth seeking out if you're interested in Mafia novels. Although, it could have been tighter in the execution. And that's it. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the review. You got this nice, beautiful book on the surface. Inside, it's it's blood. It's all blood of the innocent, spilled by the greed of the American fucking dream. I used a dollar bill. I used a dollar bill as the bookmark because it's like, it deep. Isn't it deep that I did that? Fuck, I'm done. I'm done. You can go home. You've got fucking bye. I'm wearing a Godfather shirt, by the way.